The Church of Scientology has dealt with many high-profile defectors, including celebrities and former top executives. But what you're about to see is truly unique. The father of the undisputed leader of the church quitting, writing a book, and hauling into public view an all-out war within Scientology's ruling family. I have never met a more competent, a more intelligent, a more tolerant, a more compassionate being. That is how Tom Cruise describes David Miscavige, the unquestioned leader of Scientology, one of the most controversial new religions on the planet. It's a story that affects every Scientologist. Within the church, he is exalted. Well, thank you very much. It's truly really my pleasure to join you. He holds forth in front of adoring crowds and rubs shoulders with celebrity parishioners such as Cruz, John Travolta, and Kirstie Alley. But among some former members, he is wildly controversial. He uses that power to hurt people. We were hoping to talk to David Miscavige if he's here today. I don't think that will be possible, and today it's going to be very busy. Miscavige is famously press shot. I'm sorry? It's not going to be cool to be set up out here this afternoon. That, His that last live television interview nearly 25 years ago, right here on Nightline. If, if, if I may just interrupt for a moment, you realize there's a little bit of a problem in getting people to talk critically about the Church of Scientology, because quite frankly, they're scared. Oh, no, no, no. But tonight, new claims about the secretive world of Scientology and the man at its center. Let's face it. Scientologists have not been treated like members of other religions ever. From an unusual source. So you spent 12 years right here on the street? 12 years right here, yeah. Good memories here? Pretty good memories. Ron Miscavige, David Miscavige's father, has left the church and is speaking out for the first time exclusively to ABC News. You have written a whole book about your son, and you've called the book Ruthless. Yeah. It's a pretty damning charge to level against your own child. He wasn't always that way. Ron Miscavige says he's written this book because of a Scientology policy called disconnection, which he says has torn his family and many others apart. I raised him, good or bad, and to come to this, what the hell is this? This is nuts. The church says Ron's book, co-written by a former church member who's now a noted critic of church management, is filled with half-truths and outright lies. It's, in, in my view, a literary forgery. Scientology granting us a rare interview with attorney for the church, Monique Yingling. What has David Miscavige's response been to this book? I think he's, on a personal level, I think he's, he's probably very, very sad that his father would do this. There seems to be no explanation except that his father is trying to make a buck. Uh, off of his name. While the church is attacking him, Ron is getting support from a prominent voice. I'm going to get there first. <laughs> Leah Remini, former star of The King of Queens, who also left the church and wrote a book called Troublemaker. <laughs> hey. Oh, you look like a million bucks. It's great seeing you, I tell you. Hi. Good. You're getting better looking, you know that. So the two of you guys haven't seen each other since you were both active Scientologists. That's right, right yeah. yeah. He has a right to tell his story. I have a right to tell my story, and so do thousands of others. This unusual family history and subsequent family feud is set in motion in 1968 when Ron, a father of four, a salesman, and aspiring musician, starts dabbling in Scientology after learning about the new religion founded by science fiction writer L. Ron Hubbard at a business meeting. There are certain evils in society which definitely should cease, and we are taking some responsibility for them. He says Scientology works wonders for him. Look, I didn't know what I was looking for. I knew I was looking for something. And when I got in Scientology, I felt that I found what I was looking for, which did have a lot of answers to life on a basic level. So many answers, so many life-changing benefits, Ron feels a duty as a parent to introduce his son David to Scientology as well. He hopes that somehow auditing, a sort of counseling that uses a Scientology device called an e-meter, can help nine-year-old David with his asthma. And after his first session? About 45 minutes later, David walks out, smiling, bright. That's what happened. He says, Dad, it's handled. So you're view at the time was that his asthma was cured by, by Scientology? Let's put it this way, it mitigated it 
considerably. I think it was at that moment that he decided he's going to do something with this. So you think that was the key turning point in his whole life? I know it. At age 16, David Miscavige joins the Sea Org, the religious order of the church, and develops a close relationship with church founder L. Ron Hubbard. In 1986, when Hubbard dies, David takes control, taking the title chairman of the board. By this time, David's father, Ron, has also joined the Sea Org. Pretty quickly, Ron says he notices his son's sharp-edged new management style. David is backstage literally tearing me apart verbally for 55 minutes, cursing, yelling, screaming at me. One night at a church event in the late 1980s where Ron is performing, he says David gives him an extended tongue lashing with other people looking on. When he's screaming at you, do you ever think, I changed this guy's diapers? No kidding. Of course I did. Of course I did. And that isn't the only time it happened. As the years go on, Ron says life for Sea Org members deteriorates. He chafes at what he describes as crushing workloads, restrictive rules, constant stress, a rigid lifestyle, and a lack of sleep. As time went on, it slowly went downhill, and it got worse and worse and worse. The church rejects those claims, telling us long and hard hours and a restrictive lifestyle are part of the mission Sea Org members sign on for. If you talk to the staff, they'll tell you it's the worker's paradise. It, it couldn't be a better place to work. These are people that have dedicated their lives to something that they really believe in. They, they believe that uh, Scientology can really help uh, mankind and the, and the world in general, and they're working very hard at that. As for Ron... He was working with first-class musicians in one of the best studios in the world. He had nothing to complain about. My name is Peter Schles. I'm a songwriter. The church I sent us video Ron testimonials from Ron's former bandmates. Ron was an embarrassment to me, personally. And also letters in which those bandmates call Ron lazy and crude, say he used racial and ethnic slurs, was a poor musician and a disgusting pig. Do you know of any other church that criticizes former members in the way in which Scientology does? Well, I, I, I think it all depends on the circumstances. Certainly, uh, you see that happen with respect to the Vatican and so on. When the Vatican gets attacked, I mean, they have something to say about the, uh, the attackers. If somebody leaves the Catholic Church, do you really think they're going to be on the receiving end of this level of vitriol? Not if they leave the church and they go off and live their life. No, I mean, but if, if they, they leave and criticize it, because people leave and criticize the Catholic Church all the time. Yes, exactly. And I, I do think that if, if people in the church are asked for their opinion of this particular person, that you may well get the same, uh, the same kind of criticism. But it's not as if the people were just randomly asked. This is the church itself asking its parishioners, videotaping it and giving it to ABC News. Well, again, the facts are what they are. Ron says the facts are that by 2012, he can no longer bear life in the Sea Org. So along with his wife, Becky, who he married after divorcing David's mother, he makes a radical move. He quits. When Leah Remini hears that Ron, the chairman of the board's father, has left, she reaches out. I tracked him down. I called him, and uh, I offered my support immediately because I know he must have felt alone when leaving, and uh, I just wanted him to know that we were willing to take them in. That's a big offer. Why did, well, what made you feel motivated to do that? Because there is no, um, there really is no place for them to go unless they have family, which is very rare, outside of the church. But Ron says quitting the church creates a whole new host of profound problems for him. Coming up, it's father versus son as Ron's departure exposes deep familial rifts now erupting into public view. I've never met some of my great-grandchildren. I don't even know how many there are. That is terrible, okay? That's why I'm doing this. Stay with us. This special edition of Nightline will continue.